hi there everyone. Welcome to another Cardwell's Cauldrons here at Geetopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And today we're gonna have fun with another Abzan deck. I know uh, when I made the first one I was really torn between two types and I decided to go ahead and make the other style here for sure. But before we do, go and remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us and we love you very much for it and the link will be down below. Today we are dealing with six feet under and we're going to be uh, having uh, Death Oasis, which we'll come across, and just basically using the graveyard to our advantage. And I feel like Abzan is like a very fun color to do that with, for sure. And I think it's starting to be, since there's no uh, land for like the, the Grixis and stuff, uh, Mardu, or th this one's becoming pretty fun. So we'll go ahead and start. And the first guy we have is Knight of the Ebon Legion. He's a one drop, one two. He's a vampire knight. He's really, really good. It's a two and a black. And well, his ability is two in a black. He gets plus three, plus three, death touch until in a turn. And then at the be beginning of your instep, if a player lost four or more life this turn, uh, put a one counter on Knight. So that's pretty awesome. Although I've never seen it happen, but it says a player. So that can even be yourself, I think. I haven't seen that happen yet, <laughs> but yeah. But he gets really big and angry and he can kill whatever he wants to for sure. Uh, next up is the Fiend Artisan. It is a black green, black green, so hybrid two of the Golgari. Um, he's a nightmare for a 1 1, and he gets plus one plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. And you can pay X and a black green hybrid and tap, sacrifice another creature, search your library for a creature with confirmed mana cost X or less, put it onto the field, then shuffle your library. Activate this only as a sorcery. So, yeah. He has his own built in. Uh, well, death pod, right? Yeah, birthing, birthing pod. pod. There we go. It's been a while. Yeah, you get to sacrifice the dude and go get a dude, which is really, really nice. Yeah, it's just he he helps you fuel everything that you need for for the deck. And it really helps that the X is actually the X of what you spend into it, and not like the higher one higher than the creature cost, because then you can sacrifice a token and go get a big old boy if you wanted to. Yeah, and it's really neat and it helps out. Uh, we have a, a old one here. No one plays with glow spore shaman. It's a black and a green, 3-1. Enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library in the graveyard. You may put a land card on top of your library. And if you need to turn three, you need your land. This is perfect for sure. Yeah. Uh, next is the Hero of Precinct 1. It is a white one for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you cast a multicolor spell, create a 1-1 one, one human soldier token. Or human creature token. And yep. we're playing a lot of multicolored dudes. We've already seen at least two. Yep. So you're going to have a lot of multicolored spells to get free dudes. And if you do this with the, the horror, then it comes into play, then you sack that dude for sure to get a bigger guy. The next one is Kaisel Freebooter. It's a, one of my favorite black cards. It's one in the black, one, two flying. Enters the battlefield, opponent reveals their hand. You take a, a non creature, non land card from it, exile it until it leaves the battlefield. Uh, it just plays so many mind games, and the fact that you can just be like, stop your turn three to fairy, thank you very much. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Next is the Plague Crafter. He is a black and two for a 3 2 human shaman. And when he enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, and each player who can't discards a card. So when he comes into play, you're going to sacrifice him usually or whatever else. If you have a littler dude, cool. Yeah. Um, but they're going to lose a creature or a planeswalker, and it's fantastic. Because it's just, it's good kill. It's good easy kill. Yeah. It, it, it's so useful still. Definitely people, Dream Trawler is starting to show up. And you know, that's usually the only creature they have. So you're just like, oh, kill your Dream Trawler. Luminous uh, Broodmoth. It's two and two white, three, four flying. Whenever a creature you control without flying dies, return to the battlefield under the controller with flying counter on it. So therefore you can just sack your dudes, whatever you want, and then come back. I love playing Playcrafter and then killing the Playcrafter and it coming back and doing it again. So they can, you know, sack two things or discard two cards. It's really nice. Uh, next up is Polychronos, the Unchained. He is two and a black and a green for a zero zero. Uh, he enters with six one one counters on him. If it escapes, it escapes with 12 counters on it instead. And then if damage will be dealt to Polychronos while it has a one one counter on it, prevent that damage and remove that many one one counters. Yep. And then you can pay three to fight another creature or you can escape him for six and exile six other cards from your graveyard. So this dude is big angry. Yeah, he's super big angry. And to have this and the Broodmother together is really fun because you're just like, kill your big dude, I come back, I have flying now. 6-6 six, six Trampler. Or not Trampler, but a 6-6 six, six Flyer with that counter. So it's really fun. And the 830 Shroud Build, it's a four black and a white, four seven, indestructible. I really, really want this to pop off for sure. 
As long as your Devotion of White and Black is less than 7, it is a creature, but that's not what you're really using it for. At the beginning of your instep, put a coin counter on another target creature. When a creature with a coin counter on it dies and put it into exile, return it to the battlefield under your control. And you, it says a creature, so you can put it on their creature, kill it, and it's yours now. Pretty much. That or just it, keeping any of your stuff alive constantly is really fun. Yeah. Uh, the first spell we got to help get you there is Cultivate. It's a good spell to have, and it's yes. just a good returning spell. It's powerful. Uh, green and two. Search your library for up to two basic lands, reveal them, put one in the battlefield tapped, and the other into your hand. It just helps set up so much, because you get two free lands. One is already in play, the other isn't. Yeah. You just... If you're playing green and three colors, at least always play this card. All right, the next one is Death's Oasis. It's a white, black, and green enchantment. Whenever a non-creature token you control dies, put the top two cards of your library in the graveyard. Then return a creature card of lesser conveyor mana cost less than the creature died from your graveyard to your hand. And then pay one, sacrifice Death Oasis. You gain life equal to the greatest converted mana cost equal to creatures you control. So basically it'll be like four or more or six if Aetherios is in the battlefield. But the fact that if you playcraft, it dies, or you can sack a smaller dude and get the one drop or play sack playcrafter get to or get your two drop back you know your hero precinct that they killed in turn two it's just easier way to keep going pretty much yeah and if you get polychronos in the graveyard you can escape him and not care yeah. you don't really lose value on this exactly uh next up is mortify it is a black one and one for destroy target creature or enchantment it's a really good kill spell it's it just, just it, it does what it needs to exactly and also what it doesn't what it needs to is mithros of the nethroi it's a two and a black instant Destroy target non-land permanent if it's a creature, or if you pay Abzan with it, you spent to cast a spell, you basically destroy whatever you want. And to pay three to destroy uh, anything is super awesome. Yeah. Uh, your enchantment, your artifact that's killing me, your planeswalker, whatever. I don't care. Instant speed, kill that thing. It's very powerful and it should be used all the time. Uh, next is Eerie Ultimatum. It is two white, three black, and two green. For return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to your battlefield. So, again, a Death's Oasis triggering and milling you a lot, you're going to have a lot of different cards in your graveyard. And this dude gets most of them back. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully, if it goes late game, I'll have the one of here. Hopefully it just helps, you know, save you the game. Now, of course, for the lands, we have the basics. So we have the four Swamp and Plains. And then we have all the Shock Lands. So we have the, the Ghost Shrine. Uh, the... Gala Shrine, sorry, uh, Overgrown Tomb, and of course the Temple Garden for all three. And then of course we have the the Triome, the what, Indartha Triome, that counts as all three, or you can cycle it if you drew too many land at the time. But it, it seems pretty solid, it seems really fun, the fact that if you can just keep circling your creatures back and forth over and over. And with Feed Artisan, just to be like, I need a Broodmother, I'm gonna sack this token, go get this four drop swing and then they have to deal with that you know yeah it's pretty strong yeah very strong uh with that hopefully you enjoyed this uh showing of the list i will have it on arena so I'll stay tuned next week to see that and hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at geektopia Island. you have a good day later Bye. also guys make sure you hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel and then hit that bell for any future notifications that you have for our videos and we go ahead and give a big uh, thank you to our fans for over the years, especially our Mythic and Above Patreon followers. Uh, thank you, Dwayne Higgs. And thank you, Ryan. Uh, with that, we love you. Thank you for your support.